Welcome to Search for Signs. My name is Gary Willing. If this information interests you, please press the like and subscribe button and press the bell for notifications. Where do UFOs come from? Now, I've postulated over several videos that the idea of UFOs is becoming more of a mainstream theory in the minds of people, that it's becoming more acceptable the thought that there are UFOs out there. Now, most of us, like, like everything else, have different opinions about where they're coming from, what their intentions are, and that's to be expected. But there's obviously a truth about it where other is just conjecture or speculation, right? Now, you don't have to believe what I'm about to say. You know, you can believe whatever you want to believe. You can say, you, you can believe where they come from or what their intention is. That's up to you, really. Now, the two gentlemen who I believe the most about you, where what UFOs, what their intention is and where they come from, are George Adamski and Benjamin Krem. Um, it's just the quality of the information that they're talking about for some reason resonates in my heart that this, you know, it kind of taps me on the shoulder like, hey, listen to these guys. These guys are actually telling the truth about these things. And the funny thing is, is that there's not a lot of people talking about UFOs in this way. Most people talk about UFOs. It's very spectacular. It's very mystical. It's very uh, aspirational even in a lot of ways. Um very fearful in some other ways, you know. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of different interpretations about what what UFOs are here doing and and where they're coming from. But these two gentlemen said both say there's nothing to fear about UFOs. That they're all here to help. That these they call them space brothers. They don't even call them aliens, you know. And they are coming from no farther than than our sister planets in our solar system. In particular. Mars the most, and then Venus probably the second most, you know, probably because of their closest um, planets. But also, there's a relationship that our our planet has with, according to these two gentlemen, between these two planets. And all planets are on different stages of of development. Our planet kind of is in the middle of between the very very low planets and the very very high planets. And we're, you know, we're on our way, so to speak, from the master's point of view. Now, the master's, of course, and Maitreya, you know, Maitreya being on TV, speaking directly to humanity is another step in the, in the ladder of evolution of our planet. And it's only going to accelerate our own evolution at some point. So we're on our way. And we still got a lot of stuff we got to work up, work through. We got to work on our environment. We got to learn how to get along with one another and so forth. But... We're, we're kind of working there. You know, we're not where we were 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 years ago. So we, we've made some progress, according to the masters, I guess. You have to, you have to ask them. <laughs> From this person's point of view, you know, I think we're still in the dark ages in a lot of ways. But, you know, but we're moving toward the light, I guess is a better way of saying it. Now, some planets like the planet, I know scientists don't, or and astronomers don't, think Pluto's a planet, but Pluto, Pluto actually has inhabitants as well. They're, they're an example of a planet that's not quite as evolved as ours. Now, there's also several other planets. There's not a lot, but maybe a handful of planets that our astronomers can't see based because the sun, because our, our planet goes around the sun, they're kind of hidden by other planets or, or our moon even, or, other sun, or, or the sun in particular, because the uh, sun blocks our view of them. So our scientists only think we have eight or nine planets. Just depends on whether you think Pluto's a planet or not, right? But there are other, a few others, not a lot, but there's a few other planets out there. And most of those planets, not all of them, some of them are actually more evolved than our planet, but most of those planets aren't as evolved as ours. So the, the, out of all the planets that are known, that, you know, if you were to go to an elementary school or something and see a picture of, or a, a a diagram of of the solar system most of the planets that are known are more evolved than our planet our planet with the exception of pluto is 
the, at the bottom. Now, Mars is almost, we're almost as evolved as Mars is, consciously wise. Now, technologically wise, no. But they're kind of where we, we should be because humanity's taken some missteps over the last you know, few hundred thousand years and become very materialistic. They didn't make those same mistakes that we made. So had we not made those mistakes, we would be, according to the masters, about at the level of where Mars is right now. But technologically and consciously. Now, the, the occupants that occupy the Venusian uh, spacecraft are incredibly advanced at the level of a master or above even a master. So when we interact with those beings, it's going to be at a, you know, they're going to be giving us information that's a lot deeper than most, you know, of the Martians probably would even give us. But the Martians are of a level, you know, some of them are masters, but, you know, most of them are maybe higher advanced um members of our own humanity, like Leonardo da Vinci or Jesus at the time. Not Jesus now. Jesus is a master now. But, you know, a very, very advanced disciple of one of these masters is probably the level of most of the occupants of the Martian craft. But if you were to, if you were to peek into the Venusian vehicles, well, then you're going to see that those beings are very, very advanced. Now, fortunately, we have the technology we can go to these planets and actually view the surface of some of these planets, in particular Mars and Venus, right? So scientists from NASA will tell you that there's nobody living on those planets. All we see when we, we go to Mars, right, is just a bunch of rocks. Same thing with Venus, right? The, the problem is, is that scientists postulate and scientists believe that, and all, which is the reason why all of us believe it, is because we believe our scientists without question, is because they, we all think that they're smarter than us, but you know, in a lot of ways, they they're very very smart people. But it's just they they're missing this particular piece of the puzzle. But physicality does not is not limited to solid, liquid, and gas. There are four levels of physicality above gas that the masters refer to as the etheric. So there's seven planes of existence on physicality, and the and so these space brothers live on the four, one or the other of the four levels of etheric above gas. So if you were to go to those planets, you would not see anybody. But, in, but according to the masters, there are more people living on Mars than there are living on even this planet. Now, all the occupants, according to Benjamin Krem and George Adamski, all the occupants of all the spacecraft, whether they come from Mars or Venus or Jupiter or Saturn or whatever, they all look like us. They can lower their vibration and they would look just like you or I, you know. And so they don't look like these, you know, really weird creatures that you would see in, in popular mu uh, movies and stuff like this. They don't look like that. They can walk quietly in a mall or walk quietly into a government building or whatever like this and nobody would know the difference, right? In fact... There are, according to both these individuals, there are, are space brothers living among us and have been living among us for centuries, guiding, helping work behind the scenes, helping us to solve our most pressing problems, just like the masters. But they're, they've worked in our governments. They've worked in you know scientific fields and so forth to help us build our technology. Some of these some of these uh, space brothers know consciously who and what they are other ones don't you know but for the most part they do know who they are and i don't know how many thousands of them there are here or hundreds of them that live in the in all in and around the world at this particular time but it's not just a handful it's a lot and so like i said they look like normal people and as time goes on as as the, as the master's come out more and more and Maitreya is known for who he is, eventually Maitreya is going to introduce the Space Brothers to us and we'll know for a fact what they've been doing and why they're here and we'll start to look for them for advice too because they're all here to help us. It's such an extraordinary time that we're living in that we don't, most of us are unaware of the potential of our future if we just get along together. 
you know, you listen to, I'm taking a little side note, but you listen to uh, the modern day capitalist of today, and it's all about how much money they're going to make 15, 20, 30, 40 years from now, right? On a, on a particular investment of whatever, or a company, well, that's the earnings of a company in the future, or what, what a company is going to be doing in the future, right? When really, it's going to be more about serving humanity than the, than the making of the money. You know, money will probably still be around for the majority of our lifetimes, right? But it the emphasis of making money will be will be different. But these masters and these space brothers being here to help us to show us the next way forward, right? Will become more and more of a mainstream idea as well. So right now, yes, the idea of of UFOs and aliens is a mainstream idea. The idea that they're here to help us, that they're coming from just our sister planets of mainly Mars and Venus, not so much a mainstream idea yet. But when Maitreya comes out, like I said, not long after he's known for who he is, you know, and out working, guiding, you know, giving suggestions to our world leaders to how to help you know, our most pressing problems, people will ask him about the UFOs and he'll tell them, yes, they're here. They're, they've been here for a long time. I can't wait to hear what he says about them, right? And people's reaction to what he says about the UFOs. And then the whole thing will start, and, and that side of it, the whole thing will start. But I remember Benjamin Krem, when talking about the reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom, he always said that the UFOs and the Space Brothers, it's all a part of the same event. That's how extraordinary it is. So I can't wait to see that part of it too, you know. So as we talk more about this, you know, and, and actually let me go back, you know, as I keep putting up these videos, there's more and more evidence every day of UFOs in and around our skies. And some I haven't confirmed, you know, like there was, there was an incident over the Midwestern part of the United States. Of course, the United States government claimed that it was some kind of weather experiment balloon that they, they set off from Maryland, right? And it's, that was the orbs that people saw in the sky. So I don't know, to be honest with you, I really don't know if they were UFOs or not. I don't have a real sense on it either way because they were kind of stationary. So you take it how you believe it or whether they're UFOs or not. It doesn't matter whether those were, were spacecraft from other planets or not. They're they're still in existence, you know, so just because that one may or may not be one doesn't mean that UFOs don't exist. That, that's not the end-all and be-all of proof of whether the UFOs exist or not. But even just the other day, you know, and I put up a video about this, the military leaders went to the President of the United States and brought him a bunch of information about the UFOs. You know, they don't, people in bureaucracies don't put their neck out like that unless they know it's true and they know that the other person will believe it too. They won't even bring it up. <laughs> and so why would they do that, right? And so according to Benjamin Krem and George Adamski, most of the governments around the world have a lot of evidence that these UFOs really exist and they have records of them. So as Maitreya comes out, known for who he is and starts to introduce these people, of course, well, ho hopefully the governments, and, but I, I, think if, I think it will happen, that the governments will start to release some of their files that they've had all along about UFOs. But I think the timing of this UFO that existed over the Midwestern part of the United States and the fact that just a few days prior to that, there, there was information that came out that Donald Trump had been briefed on UFO activity. The timing of it is very suspect. <laughs> so whether they're seeing more of these UFOs in the sky and they're trying to head off the publicity, you know, the, the press and the publicity of it, you know, to kind of get ahead of the, uh, the, the, um, to get ahead of the press on it and start the denying campaign, I don't know. But I, like I said, I just I don't trust the United States when it comes to what they say about UFOs. They they've lied way too many times about it. You know, calling it swamp gas or this, that, and the other. Right when these lights are f shooting through the sky, going at supersonic speed. But 
more and more pilots, more and more government officials, more and more military officials are going to be coming forward in the very near future, I'm sure, as they've been doing all along, but coming out and not having the fear of ridicule, especially, they're coming out more and more saying that they've seen UFOs. So we're in for a wild ride, I'm sure. But, And as always, take action. Help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Have a great day.